Ooh, LeBron James, LeBron James. Wow. Um, I was surprised on how he went out. Um, everybody was saying he had the most talented team. There's just too much talent. All of a sudden they lose and people are making excuses. Oh, they weren't talented enough. But you said they were talented, right? Um, but, you know, I understand. Uh, will he stay? Will he go? It's tough to say. I don't know how much flexibility um, Cleveland has in terms of their existing roster, but the appeal, because Cleveland can pay him the most. I believe it's six year, 125, whereas any other team, the most they can pay him is five mil, a hundred something, but pretty much Cleveland can give him, what is it, 20 mil for the next six years and another team can only give him 19 or something for the next five but even the the because the, they showed the little uh, 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 graphic on ESPN but it wasn't even that much of a big difference you know I thought Cleveland would be able to pay him something out of the roof but they can't even necessarily uh, do that um, and you know he's making so much money that the, the money is almost insignificant I'll put it to you like that um, from my standpoint at least um, but the appeal of another team is that you know they go he goes to New York or he goes to um, Miami with Dwayne Wade or Chicago and the whole pe uh, the appeal is that they can sign LeBron and possibly bring in another tier one free agent that's the appeal of him leaving um, so uh, you know we'll see but what people have to understand Championship teams have good players, okay? They have the star player. They have the role players. But coaching. Cleveland had the star player. They had the role players. But coaching is a big component that no one wants to talk about. You look at teams that win championships. They always have that Hall of Fame coach that you can trust. Phil Jackson. Pat Riley. Remember when Dwayne Wade won it, that was Pat Riley. Um... Greg Popovich, when Detroit won it, who'd they have? What's his name? Uh, Larry Brown. Um, you know, Doc Rivers, he's relatively, you know, uh, nah, he's been coaching for a while. Um, and, you know, he has experience. So they have these old school coaches that know how to deal with star talent and aren't going to necessarily cater or pander to the star player. They know how to take a championship team. He know They know when to coach. They know when to take a step back. And wherever LeBron James goes, that has to be part of the puzzle. Who is going to coach the team? You need good players, but you need a championship system to go with it. LeBron James still doesn't have a system that I like him in. Everything that he does great is literally based off of him creating or him improvising or him them doing some archaic sort of isolation to put him on top of the key and let him just drive to the basket and blow by you and get one of those and one layups. It's very, it, it's very uh, simple in terms of the offense that they put LeBron James in. So it's hard for him to get different looks. To me, he doesn't post up enough. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of stuff that he doesn't do, but you look at Kobe, and it's like, yo, Kobe knows. I'm the best player, and I'm working in a system that I can kill you from whatever I want to do. I Like, I can get you wherever I want you. And I can put myself so I can, get, I can kill you with my God-given ability. But then I can also kill you through the system that we run. Okay? Um... And I think that's very important. And I think that has to go into what LeBron James is looking for. You know, from a uh, fan point of view, I don't care where he goes. You know, I'm not necessarily too crazy on Cleveland. Um, but I just want to see him with the right people around him. And I want to see him with a great coach. Now, in regards to how he went out, I think you saw what happens. A great player with no system can only go so far. But when you're playing the Celtics, first you have championship, you know, uh, uh, bloodlines. But they have a system. They know what they're doing. As opposed to uh, the Cleveland Cavs that are a great regular season. They're a great regular season team, right? But in the playoffs, you need a system. That no, that you know is going to work for you, and they didn't have it. There was times where I'm like, "Yo, what are you guys doing?" 
Did you think that it was going to be easy for LeBron James? And, you know, you look at Mike Brown and it didn't really... It seems like that organization placed way too much on LeBron James. Okay. Um, yes, I'm a Laker fan and we rely a lot on um, Kobe, but he has help. And he has the coaching and he has the system. You know, we have the number two guy in Pau Gasol. You know, there's times where Ron Artest has given us big minutes. There's times where Lamar Odom and Andrew Bynum have given us big minutes. But you look at that team, do they really have that? Apart from LeBron James, who's going to really take a game over and really burn you? Kobe can have a bad game, and Kobe's had Kobe has had horrible games. But a lot of people don't know because we still win because Gasol killed. You know he had you know uh, fourteen and twenty, or, or Bynum killed, or Lamar killed, or Ron Artest had a a silent game. You know he'll he'll put up fifteen and seven. A lot of people don't know. You know a lot of the numbers that he's putting up to me is comparable to Trevor Ariza. But you know a lot of people don't know the numbers he puts up. Um, so Kobe has help. But LeBron James, you know, his supporting cast, it's big names and they look good and they dance and he's dunking and they're winning. But when you get to the playoffs, man, it's a whole different breed. It's a whole different sort of game. You know, Lakers, we had a horrible regular season. I don't really think that we ever played well. We had some big wins, but you get into the playoffs and none of that really matters. <clears throat> okay. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens to LeBron James because, and I said this before, you need star talent. There's no way around it. You need the star players, but your role players are big. You know, there's teams that are good, okay, um, because they have the star talent, but they're not championship contenders. Then there's teams that have all the role players, but they don't have that star player. I look at a team like Utah. To me, they have all the role players they need. And they have Deron Williams, but they're missing that other superstar guy to make them a championship contender. And then you have teams that have the star talent, okay, uh, but then they don't have the the role players to necessarily come through and help out, okay. Um, you know, they'll put up big points, but, you know, who else do they have? Who else are they going to, right? Um so, I mean, it's going to be interesting because I'm not even looking at the team he goes to. I mean, it's it's fun, you know, just to see somebody, you know, change scenes and see what happens, you know, the, the, the hoopla. That's fun, but I'm not even concerned with that. I'm just more concerned with what other free, big-name free agent are they going to pair him up with and what role players are they going to get? Because the problem, role players aren't cheap anymore. Okay, you know, back in the day, you can get a good role player for two or three million. Now you're looking at, you know, five or six, and that's very hard to do. It's hard to get decent role players now because they're not cheap anymore. Okay, um, and then you're talking about coach. Who's going to coach? They need a, you know, a old school sort of coach, in my opinion. They need a wartime veteran. Somebody that's been there, done that. They've been through the wars. They know how it is. That's what he needs. Mike Brown wasn't that coach. I, and I've been saying that for a long time. I thought they should have got rid of him a long time ago. I mean, he's a black guy and I love it. But from a basketball fan point of view, they should have been part of ways with him and, you know, tried to bring somebody in with a different sort of demeanor. Um, so with that being said, I mean, I'm, I'm also not happy with how he went out. I thought he could have put up more of a fight. And you can see... In his body language that he was done. That's the problem that I think a lot of people have. You can see that he wasn't there. And I think he understood that the Celtics were too much. And I think he understood that what he has, you know, the system that he has ain't messing with this system. Right? He realized, because when you look at the Celtics, yeah, there's the star power. But they know they're playing in that system. Ron, you know, uh, uh, Rondo, uh, Paul Pierce. Garnett, Perkins, uh, Ray Allen, you know, Tony Allen is giving them big minutes, big baby. They're playing in a system, so there's a level of team confidence. But the Cavaliers don't have that level of team confidence. It's that whole, in LeBron James, we trust. And LeBron James is only one man. As great as Jordan was, he was just one man. Go back and watch, watch the tapes of Chicago winning championships, and you'll realize that he had a pretty tough-minded squad. 
right? He had a squad that was there with him in intensity. He had a coach. He had a system. He had a lot going for him. But LeBron James only has himself going for him. He 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 needs more, right? He needs more. So you know that's my take. Um, you know I'll do obviously I got to do a video on my Lakers and the rest of the league. You know, this is too much. I can't spend, you know, a whole video talking about uh, another team and another player. Um, but, you know, it's a very compelling. Um, I really didn't think it would happen this way. I didn't think that they were going to beat Orlando, but I didn't think they were going to lose to the Celtics, especially how they, you know, went out. So y'all take it easy. Tell me how you feel. God bless.